to our YouTube live. Um, if you can hear me, please um, let me know on the uh, chat section. So hello everyone, welcome back to Easy Education London and today uh, we are going over the language paper one. So let me know in the chat section if you can hear me, if the audio is clear and then we can get started. Can you all hear me? If you can, please let me know in the comment section. Okay, you can hear. Awesome. Right, so what we'll do is we'll get started. Um, so good evening, year 11, and also year 10s if you have decided to join. Um, so what we are going to do is we are going to run through the entire language paper one for Monday's exam. So in today's live, what I did want to focus on is assessment objective two for paper one. So that covers language and that also covers structure. So we're, we're going to look at what language and structure is and how you can use this in your writing and also in your reading to score top marks. So what are you being assessed on here for Edexcel, Educas and AQA? So you are being assessed on AO2. So explain, comment on and analyse how writers use language and structure to achieve effects, very important, effects and influence readers using relevant subject terminology to support their views. So this is the criteria that you need to meet in order to score the top marks. So learn this and memorise it because you need to know this for language paper one and language paper two. So moving on, um, so for the AQA exam board, so that's for most of you on here, um, if you, um, if you have Edexcel or if, you, if your school follows the Edexcel or Educas exam board, then what, what you'll do is obviously you'll have a question where you have to apply both the language and structure. But for the AQA students, the only difference is that it's two separate questions. So you know for language paper one, um, you've got question two, which is language analysis, and it's eight marks. And it's in fact worth 5% of the qualification. Um, it may sound, uh, you know, not... Uh, not significant but in the grand scheme of things it, it is in fact quite quite a lot and also question three which is structural analysis that too is also eight marks and again worth five percent of that qualification so that's seen in paper one section a paper two section a again that same assessment objective ao2 does appear so it's copied and pasted from paper one to paper two but this time it's slightly longer question three language analysis is 12 marks but here it has a higher weighting. It's worth 7.5% of the qualification. So we see here it's worth 10%, but here one question alone is worth 7.5%. So how many of you uh, knew this? How many of you were familiar, familiar with this? Let me know with a thumbs up if you already knew this from um, before or prior to this YouTube live. How many of you knew this about the importance of AO2? and how it overlaps through paper one and paper two. Or is this something new that you've learned today? Okay, so okay, so that's good. Uh, you, you, um, if, you, if you knew this, then that's excellent. So as you can see, you need to master this skill of understanding what language is and also what structure is. So we're going to look at it in further de detail today and we'll look at some model answers. And what you'll do is you'll have an opportunity to mark it um, and give your feedback. And just like yesterday's live, uh, we'll go over it and give you uh, the correct marks as well. Right, so moving on. Uh, these are the criteria that the examiners follow. So on Monday, when you write your answer, the examiner will follow these criteria and see if you've met them. So you all should be aiming for level four. So what do you have to do to score top marks or, you know, level four? You have to show detailed and perceptive understanding of language and structural features. Now, I've, uh, you know, I've covered this before with uh, many of my own students. What, what does the exam board mean by detailed and perceptive? So in terms of language, who can explain? Can you write your thoughts? What, what do you think the exam board mean by detail and perceptive? Leave your thoughts in the chat section below. Okay, good analysis. Um, okay, if we be more specific, because that is quite vague, uh, 
Um, what what do they mean by detailed and perceptive? Okay, so being perceptive means to think outside the box. Well done, excellent, Tamim. Um, and uh, to hear us, so read in between the lines. Absolutely. Okay, so when you look at the quotes, um, I'll show you some of the grade nine answers. One thing you'll notice is that a lot of the times, um, the students who score top marks they read between the lines. So. One thing I need you to remember, number one, is to look at the explicit, meaning the obvious, okay? So the obvious things that you can see within the quote. And also, importantly, the implicit. So the implicit is reading between the lines and using your inference, okay? So think of it from a different angle and see what sort of analysis you can provide. So that goes for both language and structure, okay? And also detail, of course, I'm sure you know, means to develop your analysis. And one top tip I give to all my students is write a lot about a little, okay? That's how you explore the effect of language and that's how you score the top marks. Remember this for uh, Monday's exam for question two and question three, write a lot about a little. So when you have a quote, make sure you zoom in and provide further detail of the effect. For question two, the effect on the reader. And for question three, is how does it interest the readers? That, that's something that you should also cover and explore in further detail. Um, so I hope this has made some sense and provided you, uh, provided you all with some clarity uh, going into the exam on Monday. Okay, so let me know uh, with a thumbs up if you understood uh, what I've covered so far. Any questions, feel free to ask in the chat section below. So let me know with a thumbs up if you have a better understanding now of how the exam uh, how the exam board mark your responses, and if you are more confident with it. How many marks roughly do I need for a five? I do AQA. Okay, so good point. So you're looking um, just above fifty percent. So um, if you look at my video, so I have already gone over the grade boundaries. Um, from the top of my head, I would say out of eighty, you're looking at. Uh, around 45, okay, out of 80, 45 to 50 within that region, um, Preet Shah, yeah? So that, that's the region you should be aiming for, 45 to, uh, to 50 to score a grade 5. But again, do refer to my video, um, I did title it Grade Boundaries, and you can look at that for further Im uh, information of what you need for Language Paper 1 and also for Language Paper 2. Um, so I hope that answers your question. Right. So moving on, question two, so that's the language analysis question. Um, so this question guides, um, or the, the question guides students through the text sequentially. The extract provided for question two moves students through the text following the designated lines of question one. The question makes clear the focus is to analyze the language within the given lines. How does the writer use language here to dot dot dot? So you know on Monday, that's how they're gonna start the question. The bullet points guide students on the areas of language that they could consider. These are prompts and shouldn't be treated as a checklist. Students can be flexible in how they respond, focusing on aspects of language they find interesting and are confident with. Now, I know they said could in bold, but majority of the time you will find examples of all three within the insert. So, number one, um, words and phrases, of course, you will find it within the insert. So, the use of adjectives verbs, um, adverbs, nouns, whatever, um, you can analyze that in question two. Also, a second paragraph on the language techniques, such as simile, metaphor, personification, um, alliteration, sibilance, etc. And also sentence forms, the use of a short, simple sentence, a declarative sentence, um, a compound sentence, etc. So you can explore that for question number two. Um, question three, so again, it's on structure. So the question is always worded the same. So literally every single year, um, the exam board can't be asked, okay? So uh, it's literally the same every single year, okay? They just copy and paste. So the question is always worded the same and will always direct students to consider the whole of the source. So you need to make sure you demonstrate a range of quotes from the beginning to the middle to the end. They will always say, how has the writer structured, which means how has the writer organized the text to interest you as a reader? The focus is on structural features used by the writer and the effects they achieve. Remember, write this word down. Effects, always this is where you get the top marks. Effects they achieve. So how does it interest the reader? This is your focus of this question. Skills in the assessment objective. So common 
explain and analyze. So you're analyzing structure here, of course. This suggests an, this suggests an internal hierarchy of progression with the ability to analyze being the, hard, being the highest order. It's the same assessment objective as question two, the only difference being structure rather than language. So that's for all the AQA students here. I know some of my students here um, are studying for Edexcel and Educas, um, but remember for your example for Edexcel especially, they combine the two, so language and structure. So this shouldn't really be confusing for you all. Um, Edexcel students, they ask you this question in one, okay? Language and structure, you should mention both when you're analyzing it. Um, so that's that. Um, again, paper two, question three. Okay, that's for not this Monday, but the following Monday. The same assessment objective is um, uh, appearing where you are assessed on language analysis on question three. So this question is similar to paper one, question two, except, um, except it gives students more scope to self-select language features from a longer passage in one of the sources. This focus or this question should focus on either source A or source B, which ensures the better suited source for language analysis to be selected. If the 19th century text is selected, there's no expectation for students to consider contextual, social or historical influences of the text. So you do not get marks, uh, speci uh, especially for AO3. Remember, this isn't GCSE English literature. It's in fact GCSE English language. So there's no need for you to, you know, specifically elaborate and bring in context or social or historical influences. Um, so that's that. Uh, okay, I'm going to skip that. AO2. Okay, that's fine. Okay. Okay, camera tracking. Okay. Um, yeah, okay, so this is important. So um, who's heard of camera tracking? Before I move on, um, does anyone know what camera tracking is for question three? If so, can you explain in the comment section? What is camera tracking? For question three, structure. So what do they mean by camera tracking? Think about a camera, um, and if you're tracking the camera, how does it link to structure? Leave your thoughts um, in the comment section below. Okay, zooming in, zooming out. Okay, well done. Uh, excellent, Tamim. Preet, is, is it like a shift in focus? Well done, yep. So you're you're using a camera. You see, if, imagine, um, you see my uh, phone here. Um, imagine you take a picture um, and you're sort of taking different pictures of different frames. This is called camera tracking. Similarly, on Monday, when you're annotating students the insert, please use camera tracking. I know you don't have your your phones with you. I hope you don't, by the way. But um, you're literally going through it with a camera, of course, being your peripheral, uh, peripheral vision. Uh, your peripheral vision being your eyes, of course. Um, so you're looking at it from the beginning to the middle to the end. So let's have a look at it in further, um, further detail. Um, a lot of you should be getting uh, should be getting eight out of eight. Um, it's not a difficult question. Okay, um, what it is is that students overcomplicate it for no reason. So the examiner's report highlighted very important. What I would say: read the examiner's report in your spare time. Um, if you have time later on today, have a look at the examiner's report. This is what the top students do: they read the examiner's report and look at what has happened, and they take the feedback on board. Okay, so that's something that you need to consider. Um, wait, hang on. Okay, 61%. Okay, so we've got enough charge. Right, so the examiner's report highlighted how students who note shifts in focus and perspective and make thoughtful comments on the effects of these changes and what is suggested often achieve higher marks, okay? So how many times have I said this to my own students? If I have told you this, leave a thumbs up. How many times have I mentioned this? Look, it, um, it's mentioned clearly by the exam board. Note, shifts in focus and perspective, how many times have I told my own students, and make thoughtful comments on the effects of these changes and what is suggested often achieve high marks, okay? So this is something that you have to use um, regularly in order for you to, um, you know, ensure you score top marks. Encourage students to use their bullet points prompts so that they consider the writer's sequencing, structural shifts, and movement throughout the text and the reasons behind them. Um, this strategy can help students to practice the skill of noticing, examining patterns and making links across a text. So that's absolutely crucial um, in terms of your preparation for paper one, question three. 
So um, camera tracking, so in simple terms, make sure students consider where. So where is the camera directing our attention? So what is the focus? Okay, to those of you who don't know what camera tracking, you may want to make a note of this when you're practicing either t uh, later on today or even tomorrow. So where is the camera directing our attention on? Is it on a setting? Is it on a character? Um, is it on dialogue, etc.? What, what are we being shown? Are we being shown um, a description of a house? Are we being shown the events or the interaction between one character and another? Um, and why? Consider what is happening at this point and why? And how? Very important. Does seeing this at this moment add to our understanding of the whole text? Encourage students to think about the whole of the source as instructed by the question in order to explore the development of character or events. So what I would say is divide the insert into three parts. Number one, beginning. Number two, the middle. Number three, the end. What I, what I do is I literally draw lines and I split the insert into three parts. Comment below if you do the same. Do you split the um, insert into three parts when you're annotating for structure. Okay, and thank you um, for that comment, yep. Um, so, do you all do that? Let me know in the comment section below. When you um, annotate for structure, do you all divide the insert into three parts? Okay, okay, well done, excellent. That's great to hear. If you don't, what I would say is get into the habit of doing that. So tomorrow when you're practicing some past papers, literally draw lines, and divide it into three parts, okay? Uh, one, the first part, obviously, the beginning. Just write brief notes on what the focus is on the beginning, the middle, what is the focus towards the middle, and also what is the focus towards the end, okay? Right, so moving on, so I'm going to zoom past this. Structural features, these are all the ones you need to memorise. Memorise, memorise, memorise. Learn them, understand them, because I guarantee you, you will find these on Monday's exam. So below are some methods a writer might use to structure their writing in interesting and effective ways. Number one, zoom in from something big to something much smaller. We have here my iPhone. Okay, so this is my work phone. So if you think about the iPhone, you've got um, the zoom lens, right? Think of it as a camera. So you've heard of me say camera tracking. Look at the insert. Imagine you have a camera. Zoom in from something big to something much smaller. So for example, the easiest example, if you're confused, is often the writer may provide a description using a bird's eye view, okay? They're giving you a wider picture of the setting. And then as the paragraphs progress, it goes into something much smaller. So who can tell us in the comment section, what, what do you think that means, okay? Or who can think of an example of, for example, if they start by describing the setting using a bird's eye view, what can they do to show something much smaller? Can you write your examples in the chat section below? What's a common feature or something common that they do? Okay, any thoughts? How, um, how does the writer use zooming in? So how do they go from something big to something much smaller? What can they do? Does anyone know? Let, uh, let me know in the, uh, in the chat section so we can discuss. This, this is something important that you need to know for Monday. Even if you're wrong, that's completely fine because, again, you're here to learn. Shift to the character. Okay, that is correct. Well done. So what happens often is that they start off with a bird's eye view. Okay, or if they don't start with a bird's eye view, they might start off with a uh, sort of broader description of the setting and then they zoom in to a specific character. So well done. Yep. Excellent. Yeah, focus shift in character time setting tense. Well done. Exactly. So fantastic um, commentary from uh, my students, so fantastic. So that is exactly something that the writer often uses. So keep your um, eyes peeled because this is something that may uh, be relevant for Monday. Number two, shift between different times. So in simple terms, obviously, you're looking at chronology. In time order, how does things shift? Um, a gradual introduction of new characters. What's the significance? If the um, insert 
introduces a character, do they just suddenly appear or do they appear gradually? If so, what's the significance of that? So to those of you who've done the Ugru insert, um, the Alexander Cole insert, the Scorpion insert, um, so the Kino insert, you would see the introduction of new characters. What's the significance of that? So to those of you who did the, um, the Scorpion insert, you see that the mother, um, I, forgot, I forgot the name of the mother, but the mother appears gradually, okay? She doesn't appear straight away, but you want to talk about the significance of that. And to those of you who have start, um, answered that um, insert, you'd see the significance of that is that the mother was observing and it shows you her mental capacity, her mental intelligence, okay? And how she's mentally strong, whereas the father, yes, is physically strong, but he's mentally weak. So that's an example of a comment that you can provide for question three. Moving from the inside to the wider outside world, so that's simply inside to outside, shift from the inside to the outside. So from the inside the house um, and then transitioning to the out um, outside. Combine external actions with, with internal thoughts. So can you all remember, um, again, I know I refer to the Alexander Cole uh, insert, that's because um, I've covered this recently with a majority of my students. What, um, who can remember, to those of you who did the Alexander Cole insert, what were the external actions? External actions. Does anyone remember very quickly? So external actions are things that happen outside. Okay, external. Okay, does anyone know? Okay, um, it seems like maybe some students have forgotten, that's fine. So the um, the external action here is that you've got the storm or you've got the um, heavy rain or heavy um, sort of uh, water or the aggressive sea, so the roaring ocean. So you can see the aggressive storm um, is also reflected through his internal thoughts, okay? Um, so again, this is something for you to comment on as well, potentially. Uh, is the writing blurry from anyone else? Yeah, is it blurry? As long as you can read it, um, it could be slightly blurry, but as long as you can read it, that's the main thing. Yeah, let me know in the chat um, section if you find it blurry. But I hope it's not that blurry, as long as it's legible. Yeah? Okay, uh, right, moving on. Um, alternate between different points of view. So if there's a shift in perspectives, you need to uh, comment on this for question three. Structure, move from the wider outside world to the inside. So that's moving from the uh, that's moving moving from the outside to the inside. Switch between different places. So that's a shift in the setting. In simple terms, it's not readable. Um, for me, it is. Oh, okay. Um, you know what? It, it could be from your side. So you might want to leave uh, the live and join again. Um, but it seems like everyone else can um, read it. Um, can you leave a thumbs up on the chat so I know you all can um, see what I'm going over? Again, these are all, literally all important information um, for you to know. So do leave, leave a thumbs up if you can read what's on the screen. I mean, from my side, it obviously looks clear. So... You can change the quality in settings, okay. Um, okay. It's, um, you know, you know what it is. I'm, <laughs> I am quite new to the YouTube live, so I'm just checking the settings. Okay, you see. Okay, it seems like um, most of you are able to see it. So I'm. Oh, okay. As in, okay, for the student side. Okay. Um, I don't know, but um, I think best thing to do is to leave the live and rejoin again and um, what you can do is turn your uh, data off and uh, after like 10 seconds turn switch it back on and then hopefully that should um, fix um, the sort of stream whatever right moving on switch between different places so i've mentioned that so that's a shift from the outside to the inside or the inside to the outside etc Non-chronological order. So if it's not written in time order, the easiest thing that the writer uses is flashbacks. Now, you see all these structural features. I know I'm going over question three, but can you can you use these for your question five on Monday? Can we use these for question five on Monday? So creative writing. 
What do you all think? Can we use these for question five or we can't? Yes, absolutely. Well done. Yep. Yeah. Okay, well done. Uh, Tahira, Mayid. Yep, excellent. So absolutely. Because a lot of the time, um, so I can see most of you here um, are like my own students. And one thing you would probably acknowledge here is that with question five, your creative writing, you all use language really well. Um, you use personification, you use pathetic fallacy, you use um, imagery, you use simile, metaphor, personification, etc. But a lot of the time, for some strange reason, you guys forget the structural features. So I know some of you are pre-planning your question five. What you need to do is to edit your answer and make sure you've got some of them. You don't have to have all of them. It's not required. But you need to show at least some of them within your answer. And finally, develop and reiterate focusing on a dominant point of view by expanding and repeating it. So that's absolutely crucial in preparation for question three structure, okay? So whenever you see structure, learn these and find them. So what you can do today or tomorrow, maybe when you wake up um, in the morning, go through literally two to three past papers, um, have this um, checklist in front of you and what I want you to do is find all of these features within within the insert. Trust me, do this tomorrow and it'll pay dividends on Monday. Okay, so I hope that gives you all a better understanding. Leave a thumbs up if you um, find structure uh, clearer and you have clarity with structure for question three. Leave a thumbs up, like the, uh, the live stream so I know you are all um, enjoying this and finding this beneficial. Awesome, excellent, well done. Thank you very much. Um, so that's great to hear from um, everyone. Um, so far, does anyone have any questions for structure? Please ask, it's a great time. And remember, you're getting um, feedback and advice from um, myself, a qualified teacher, who's, who's personally worked with AQA as well, okay? So I'm able to provide you with, um, you know, advice in preparation for Monday's exam. And no, I am not marking the papers this year, just to answer your questions. Um, any questions so far to do with structure? Structure, structure, structure. Any confusions? Could you please explain cyclical? Okay, yeah, that's absolutely fine. So a cyclical structure is when the writer begins and ends in the same way, okay? So that could be the easiest way is the setting. They start, for example, in the middle of the forest and they end this story in the middle of the forest. So that is what a cyclical structure is. It literally goes in a cycle. So Quinta DR. So I hope that answers your question. What would be a generic effect for shift in focus? So again, it can show, a sh um, a sh uh, again, it depends on what the text is really. So um, if you're asking for a generic effect for shift in focus, it intrigues us and it can show an alternative viewpoint. So if it shifts uh, from one character to another, it can give us a better insight of another character. So if we have Alexander and then it shifts to his sister or his sibling, it can give us a better um, sort of insight of the family dynamics and they and how they are struggling to cope with the, um, the mother's illness. So I hope that answers your question. Um, can we still use present tense when doing flashback? Um, so who can answer that question? That's a good question. But can someone answer that? Let's see if someone can answer that. Can we still use present tense when doing flashback? No? Okay, so what would be a generic effect for shift in focus? Okay, I've answered that already. No, no, okay. Do we need to mention quotes on... Okay, okay, wait, hang on, yeah. So if you look at... If you look at the um, the question here, can we use present tense when doing flashback? The answer is no, because a flashback is when you go to the past, right? So if you go to the past, you you are you you are using the past tense. You cannot use the present tense. That's impossible. So I hope that answers your question um, um, for you. Um, next question: What what's the best way of linking it back to the question without saying the same generic? Therefore, this interesting reader. Okay, that is boring because, and that's very vague, because um, if you say, therefore, this interests the reader, that's just a, a sort of simple and, um, uh, you know, 
I wouldn't say, yeah, it's not a clear way of telling us how it interests the reader. So what I would say here, so um, I know your account is some random organism on earth, but what, what I would say is make sure you tell us how and why it interests the reader. So, you know, you see um, where you're saying, therefore, this interests the reader. You're going to change that and tell us how it interests the reader and why it interests the reader. So I hope that answers your question, okay? And do we need to mention quotes on this question? Yes, absolutely. You have to use evidence from the text, okay? Um, is the live from yesterday not saved? Yes, it is saved. Um, so it, um, that's something that you can sort of use um, and um, sort of make notes on. So it is on my live, so do check out my channel. Um, and it's something that you can refer to as well, okay? Right, so I hope that gives you all a better understanding. Um, what we'll do is we'll move on because we do have a few other things to look at. Um, right, so for a typical level four response, so that is the highest band, what do you have to show? You have to show the following. A clear focus on the question, develop a line of argument, a big idea, a judicious use of detail, so being more selective in choices. So what this means um, is in simple terms that you are being selective, you are being very uh, judicious with the quotes you choose. Pick quotes where you have to talk a lot um, about a little, okay? Okay, so as a, as a teacher, what's the hardest question or the question most you drop marks? Okay, right, from my experience, and if I take um, my class of 2023, um, so I'm sure, um, again, most of my students here, um, again, would probably agree as well, is that for question, um, sorry, for question, the, the worst, well, I mean, I wouldn't say worst, the weakest question that students find is, in fact, question number... Let me see if you guys can guess. It's in fact question four, yeah? So that's correct. Question four is poorly answered and the average is like only nine to 10 marks, okay? So you clearly can see um, question four is a question a lot of students struggle with, so evaluation. So um, we are gonna go over it one last time tomorrow and it's something for you to remember, okay? Right, um, so that's fine. Now, in terms of your preparation, um, for question three, I hope you all feel more confident in terms of what structure is, okay? So we're going to look at a few more just to um, sort of go over it very quickly um, and show you some model answers. So let me know if you have any comments so far and then I can answer them. Um, okay, right. So we're going to look at a question two model answer. Um, so again, a level four. So this is a grade eight, grade nine answer. Um, so what do you have to show for a level four? Perceptive detail analysis. So seven to eight out of eight marks, okay? So let's have a look at it in further detail. Right, so let's have a look. So it begins, the writer's choice of adjectives, okay? Remember on Monday for question two, make sure you um, annotate and identify the word class. So if I just, sorry, if I just zoom, turn it this way slightly. The writer's choice of adjectives to describe Hartop as a thin, angular man, starved faced, suggests both the gaunt appearance of a man who is malnourished and metaphorically the hard edges of someone whose character is possibly devoid of generosity or compassion for others, including his family. So do you all see the, um, the implicit commentary that you have to make within your point here, okay? This is what we mean. And also make sure you expand and um, analyze in further detail. The use of the adverb awkwardly, again, make sure you identify the word class. How many times have I seen some of my own students, right, they fail to identify the word class. So the use of the adverb awkwardly, where it says that he seemed to occupy almost all the seats sprawling awkwardly, not only reinforces the impression of Hartop's body being tall, sharp and skinny, but also that in deliberately sprawling, okay, remember, zoom in, spreading his frame, remember, zoom in, so they're zooming into the word sprawling, spreading his frame and taking up the space in the van, he was self-centered and intentionally selfish towards others. Remember, in-depth analysis. A difficult person in mind and attitude to life as well as in body. So can we see within this paragraph, would you all agree 
This is evidence of perceptive detail analysis. Let me know. If you believe this is an example of perceptive detail analysis, leave a thumbs up. Excellent. Well done. Yeah, absolutely. So the top tip I will give you all, thank you very much, um, is that you need to zoom in to a particular word. So as you see in this grade nine answer, eight out of eight, they looked at the word um, awkwardly and then they looked at the words, um, if, you, if I scroll down here, um, they identified the significance of that. Okay. So the use of the adverb awkwardly and then they elaborate further on sprawling as well. So pick out, thank you very much. Yep. Uh, Quinta, Tahira and Tamim. Thank you. Um, so you need to pick out a particular word and zoom into it because that's how you explore the effect. So make sure you do that on uh, Monday's exam. So that is question two for you. Um, just a snapshot of a model answer. Um, so I'm going to move on to question three, so which is all about structure. So again, very simple, same concept. So the same mark scheme applies. You have to demonstrate a perceptive detail analysis. So, okay, dark click. So um, can you go through question four later, please? I need help. That's completely fine. Um, we did cover it, not yesterday. Uh, we covered it on Thursday evening. So what we'll do is we'll cover it tomorrow. Um, so tomorrow we'll probably start um, I do want to start earlier because um, obviously the, the following day you've got the exam. So I would say you, yeah, we'll probably have to go over it tomorrow. Is that okay? So if we go over a question for tomorrow, but it's definitely something I do want to go over. We're, we're going to go over some model answers, some top tips and how to structure your question for answer. You cannot mess up question four. It's a crucial question. Um, what would you say would be the best thing to do tomorrow, sir, for preparation? Um, is this one of my students? Is this someone I teach? Because I can't really tell by the name. What would you say would be the best thing to do tomorrow? Okay, I would say pre-plan your story, memorize it and use it for Monday's exam. Learn it, memorize it and prepare for question five because uh, I'll be honest with you, question five decides what you get, okay? Um, if you do really well in question five, you've done really well in language paper one. If you do really poor in question five, you'll do really poor in question five. Um, so that's something I would advise you all. Um, and really, honestly, um, again, I taught many of my students today for question five. Um, a lot of my students have memorized and used um, their pre-plan story and they're en route to score 37, 38, 39. So you still have a day to go over it. Pre-plan your stories, show it to your teachers um, for feedback, etc. To those of you who I teach, um, tomorrow is our last and final opportunity. Bring in your work and we will go over it and provide you all with feedback. Uh, question five, okay, Rehan, um, question five is the hardest for me. My mind just goes back. Yeah, this is why, Rehan, what I would say is you need to pre-plan, write a generic story or description and you can use that and just tweak it in the exam. So practice um, writing model paragraphs of the weather, of positive weather and negative weather and use that and apply it in your exam. That is obviously uh, based on the question that they give you. Uh, at what time tomorrow? Okay, in terms of timing, I've got one-to-one -one bookings, I've got group classes I'm teaching tomorrow, but um, I would say, I would prob probably say maybe 8, 8 p.m. tomorrow. Um, is that okay with everyone, 8 p.m.? So if we run for one hour, we finish at nine, Eight to nine. Is tomorrow eight to nine a good time? Leave a thumbs up if you think eight to nine is a good time because obviously we don't want to do um, too late tomorrow. But uh, do, yeah, okay, that's fine. Thank you. Good time. Excellent. Right. What we'll do is on Monday, I do want to run through language paper two um, on starting Monday evening. Again, um, for half an hour to an hour every single day, um, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday and Friday also Saturday and Sunday. So it's the final push. Um, I do want you all to prepare for language paper too because uh, these exams are so, so important. And again, it's, this is no exaggeration. Your English exams um, are going to decide, you know, what you do in the future in terms of career. Right, um, my teacher taught us how to write. Okay, Rehan, my teachers only taught us how to write Description. Should I just learn how to write a story for next year? Yeah, so um, if you're in year 10, so uh, any of my year 10 students here, you would know today 
we looked at writing a description and a narrative. So to answer your question, Rehan, learn um, both a description and a narrative because in the exam, they might give you two of each or one of either. So meaning they could give you two descriptive writing tasks or two narrative writing tasks or one of each. Okay, so I hope that answers your question, Rehan. So um, I hope that is um, some valuable advice. Okay, Muayyad, okay, thank you very much. Quinta, okay, excellent. Awesome. Does the two descriptive thing for AQA cause that has never happened before? Does the two descriptive... Okay, right, so what's happened before? It's happened, I think, in the November series once, I believe. Okay, I think it was two narratives, okay? I don't think it was two description um, tasks. I believe it was two narrative tasks that you had to write. Um, so, so what's the lesson plan for tuition tomorrow? Uh, so tomorrow in uh, uh, your tuition lesson, we're going to go over your question five, the one that you've pre-planned, and we're going to bump it up to a 38, 39 uh, for tomorrow. Um, how many plots, though, sir, because the one that I pre-planned, it only works for certain questions? Um, well, I mean, not really, because all you do is you have to tweak it and make sure it answers the question, okay? Um, so... If there's a question on like name a big rot on your face, which has nothing to do with the pre plan yeah, then yeah, then you what you do um, with that, you add the problem within your story. The one that you've memorized, you add that element of a dilemma. Okay. Yeah, even if it's nothing to do with what you've planned, um, you add that in the exam as you go through it. Okay. Salam, sir. Walaikum salam. CR7 fan. I don't know um, who this is because obviously you have like a different name. Um, but yes, yeah, so uh, welcome to my YouTube live. If there's a question, uh, okay, I have to pre plan the entire answer. I thought I would only have to pre plan. Now, I would say, uh, Tamim, is to pre plan the entire answer so then we can go over it tomorrow. Can you go through question three now? I am, yeah, I am going to go over it right now. Um, so I am going to get started with that. Uh, sir, for question, can I apply a home alone horror story to any question? Um, yeah, I mean, it, it really depends on the question. So I think um, just tweak it based on what the exam is as well, okay? Quinta, for question five, I write four paragraphs, one for weather, uh, one, sorry, one for weather, one for the setting, one for character, and the last for the second character. Is that okay? Well, I mean, to answer that, I mean, it, it, doesn't, it doesn't really um, suggest how many paragraphs you should write. Uh, on what specific idea or topic. So it really depends, okay? So that's something for you to remember. Um, so you could have two paragraphs on the weather. So to uh, I can't really answer that. There's no like specific guidance to answer that, okay? Right. So moving on. So we are going to look at question three. We're going to look at a model answer. Um, and then you can provide your feedback as well. Okay, so awesome. Uh, so right, moving on, okay. So the hot, so this is a model answer for question three. Um, so to score level four, you have to show perceptive detail analysis for seven to eight marks out of eight. So what do you have to do? The hardtop's van is the main focus of the text. In the beginning, when the old and shoddy exterior is described, and towards the end when Alice could see the red taillight of the van again. Okay, remember quotes. I know someone asked, so, um, like, do we use quotes in our question three? Absolutely. Look at it. Look, you have to back it up with evidence. And is, reun and is reunited with the parents. The text begins with the exterior of the van. Remember, look, always start by telling us what the focus is on in the beginning. And to those of you who I've taught, you would have known in the beginning, they either focus on three things, okay? Setting, character, in media res, Okay, or dialogue, it'll be one or the other, okay? So clearly you can see it's obviously meeting that criteria. So the text begins with the exterior of the van, old and repainted green, traveling through the treeless stretch of country in the wind and rain. Um, the, this wide and open scene is then contrasted with the claustrophobic and squashed up interior of the front of the van, where Alice and her mother, despite their th uh, thinness, are pressed tight together Remember, embed these short quotations as you write your answer. Um, White's hardtop is sprawled awkwardly on most of the seat. Um, we then move forward through the rain countryside, rainy countryside as hardtop drives the old van to its destination in order to sell his produce. Uh, 
This movement is stopped when the van stops and the subsequent dialogue results in Alice leaving the van to look for whatever has fallen from the roof as the van is driven on. Um, the family once so pressed together are now separated. The reader stays with Alice outside in the rain. Remember, focus on the inside and the outside students. Um, outside in the rain, watching the tail light of the van disappear. The text develops with Alice later moving out. Remember, show the transition. The text develops with Alice later moving out of the darkness when she sees the stationary red tail light and the lights of the houses. However, at the end of the text, she is cast back into isolation. Remember, commentary towards the end. At the end of the text, she is cast back into isolation by the sharp words of her father. And we leave her as she walked away and vanished all without a word. So that's something that you need for eight out of eight. Okay. So again, literally, as you can see, um, obviously it's written in one chunk. But if you were to divide it into the paragraphs, that is something that would um, actually score you eight out of eight. Um, okay, so questions. Um, okay. Um, where are you? From? Okay, so, okay, let's stick to what's um, on the screen because, um, again, we are revising for our exams, so we do want to stick to what's on the screen. So I got a what do you do when you don't understand the word or phrase? Okay, good point. So what do you do if you have a word or phrase? So one thing I'm going to say here is that when you have a word or a phrase, the easiest thing to do is to identify it as number one, um, it can be uh, auditory imagery, or number two, it can be visual imagery. So it can be one or the, uh, one or the other, and you can tell us what sort of picture it creates in the reader's mind, okay? So dark click, so I hope that answers your question. It could be one or the other, visual imagery or auditory imagery. Okay, excellent. But you know what it is, um, dark click? So what I'm going to say is pick out quotations that um, are beneficial and something that, you know, you can use, um, you know, in preparation for your um, exam. Use quotes where you can talk a lot about, uh, about the question, okay? Um, so that's that. So I hope that sort of gives you all a breakdown of question three structure. Um, and again, that is literally everything you need to know for language analysis and structure. So what we'll do is we'll have to end it here for today um, as we have reached the end of the session. So um, thank you very much. Um, all the best with your revision. Uh, we shall continue tomorrow. Um, any final questions before we wrap up? So do give this live a thumbs up. Uh, do subscribe, like and share with your friends and family. Uh, we do have content going up soon um, in preparation for language paper one and paper two. Um, so that's that. Okay. Is this, um, is this live being saved? Okay, so is this live being saved? Yeah, it is being saved. Um, and you'll be able to view it and re-watch it again. Uh, probably in like an hour, uh, sorry, not an hour. Um, it probably, like I would say, probably by tomorrow, okay? Thank you for the class, very useful. I have subscribed. Excellent, that's great to hear from you. Um, how did you all find today's session? I hope you found this beneficial and you have some clarity in terms of AO2 language and structure. Regardless of your exam board, I hope you feel more confident and you have gained some knowledge from this YouTube Live. Um... Okay, so, excellent. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you for the class, very useful. Where did you get these examples from? Oh, uh, this is, okay, these examples are from the AQA specification. So as teachers, we get access to these um, AQA model answers and model examples, yeah? Um, thank you. Okay, thank you, Moayed. Uh, I might see you this, uh, I don't know if you're coming in on Wednesday or Thursday, but... If you're there on Wednesday or Thursday, um, I shall see you on Thursday um, and then we can prepare for language paper to Mayad. Uh, thank you, sir. Okay, thank you. Well done. Okay, excellent. That's great to hear from you. You found it very beneficial. Well done, Tahira. Uh, where can we get such model answers? Um, okay, you can find them on my YouTube channel, okay? If you go through my YouTube channel, you'll be able to find them um, and prepare for them, okay? And... Some of you are, okay, so who? Okay, I'm getting lost with all these questions now. Um, so, okay, 
You got any tips for question four and five? Okay, right, for question four, um, for question four, um, who asked that? Okay, CR7 fan, okay, so Ronaldo fan, right? Um, I would say um, the best thing to do is to, when approaching um, question for evaluation, you explore both language and structure, find evidence to do with language, find evidence to do with structure, use that to support the student's statement. Um, so I hope that answers your question. And for question five, um, CR7 fan, um, practice, Sorry, um, practice, yeah. So practice writing a pre-planned story. Um, practice describing the weather, positive and negative. To those of you who I teach personally, um, you would know I have given you all um, examples of both positive and negative paragraphs. All you do is you just tweak in the exam. Okay, all you do is you tweak it for the exam. Um, also, let me show you if I've got it here. I don't know if I've got it. Yeah, there we go. Okay, these are my final predictions um, that you need to remember. Um, but it is on my YouTube channel, so you just watch it um, and make notes on it in t in preparation for Monday. Um, so, so you got, okay, I hope that answers your question, CR7 fan. Um, very good. I will prepare some questions for tomorrow. Well done, Quinta. Excellent. So share it, please um, share it with your friends and tell everyone else to join uh, because tomorrow's lesson, I will be going over question four and then question five. And then uh, we'll go over any other questions you guys have. Um, and some final top tips as well. Do check out my YouTube channel. I have made some predictions um, in terms of what will appear in your insert. Um, very good. And how should I start it? Could you get a question? Also, so how do you use a one sentence? Okay, so to use a one sentence paragraph, CR7 fan, you are literally showing a shift in focus, okay? A one sentence paragraph, you can shift the idea or you can use a one sentence paragraph to build tension, okay? So that's um, why and how you would use a one sentence paragraph. You use it to shift the focus or build tension. So how many should I pre-plan? Um, again, I had some students today bring it in uh, to our lesson. Um, and to be honest, I would say one, okay, one which is generic. And then what I'll do is I'll give you feedback for tomorrow um, and then you can tweak it and prepare it for Monday. Okay, I will be there on Wednesday, so yeah. So to be, yeah, so um, if I see you on Wednesday, bring in um, your language paper to work with you and then we'll run through some past paper questions. Will you do lives for paper two? Absolutely. Um, so I will be going live every single day. Can you all let me know um, what days you have your exam? So I know Monday you've got English language. What's on Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday and Friday? Can you just quickly just type away, tell me what exams you have on Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday and Friday? Um, okay, Mai, I'll see you soon. Um, will you do lives for paper two? Yep, Quinta, I've answered that. Thank you. Um, yeah, he will. Thank you. Can we can we do mostly agree and then a little disagree for question four? So then we say that I agree to an absolutely. Uh, Mian, Walid, Ahmed, absolutely. That that's exactly what you should do. Okay, that shows great evaluation. Um, Tam, you have to make a critical response. Absolutely, Mai. Yeah, excellent. Uh, Tuesday is Spanish, Wednesday is maths, okay. Uh, mine tomorrow and next on 12th, okay, yeah. Um, okay, so Tuesday, I'm assuming you all have language. Tuesday, you're free. Wednesday is maths. Thursday, uh, you're free. Friday, geography. Spanish on Tuesday, okay. I know it sounds easier said than done, but believe me, it goes a long way. Rehan, so do you think the yeah, 10 marks are important or can we just study over the holidays if we flop? Um, I would say... Um, yeah, year 10 marks are important because your teacher and your school will give you uh, predictions based on your year 10 marks. So do take them seriously, okay? Um, and most of your learning, Rehan, does take place in year 10. Um, if you ask the year 11s, even on this live, they, I'm sure they all would agree. This year, this academic year has gone by like a flash, okay? Yes, that's a simile. But again, it, it goes so quickly. It just shows you how quick time, you know, passes by. So I would say take those exams seriously and start preparing on the 5th and on the 12th. Um, so how do you think we should do the questions in what order? Okay, so um, again, personal preference, okay, uh, what I would say is that for question, uh, or for section A and section B, start off with, um, I mean, you know, do you know what it is for students? I'm not going to tell you which question to start off with. It's up to you. Some of my students, again, some of you even here, I know I've spoken to you personally. Some of you said, you know what, I'm going to start off with section B, question five, get it out of the way, um, get my, you know, uh, uh, pick up 
the most marks possible uh, at the beginning and then work um, over and switch over to section A. Others, so other students of mine said, um, what is, uh, they're going to start off with section A reading and then build up um, and then build up and then move on to section B. Uh, Rehan is not in front that deep. No, you went, no, you went so slow. Okay, I don't know what we're talking about here. Uh, speak Spanish, okay. This is good. Uh, yeah, section B would be the best to start. Again, yeah, it's personal preference, I'll be honest. Um, and it's something that, I'm not going to tell you all, look, start off with section A, section B. But if you were to ask me personally, if I was to reset, I, I'll be honest, I would start off with section B. But you can start off with section A. The reason being, section A is also linked to section B. So the ideas, the story, the insert will have some correlation to section B. So there are pros and cons to that. Uh, you might want to learn from me. I did nothing yet, and now I'm in year 11, two days before the end. Watch. <laughs> yes, okay. Um, yeah, I mean, uh, okay. So I would say just prepare in advance, okay, because time does fly by. Um, ask my year 11s, time does, you know, zoom, zoom past. So also one more question. What is, what is a passing grade? I'm nervous to fail. Uh, you're not going to fail, okay? As long as you do what we've, uh, your teachers have told you, you should be on the right tracks, okay? Uh, when do you, when you do the story in question five, does it have to relate to the picture or not? Okay, good good question. Um, again, I get this question quite often. Now, to answer that, the picture you get is solely for the description. To those of you who are sitting the AQA exam on Monday, the picture they give you is based on the description. It's not linked to the story, so your story can be completely different. Um, inshallah, we can pass. Yes, absolutely. Okay, so make dua and. Uh, read your duas as well. Okay, that's important. Um, right. Any any other questions? I can um, sort of see that there are some interesting questions. What is the passing rate? Um, I think I've answered that. So you're looking at around 45 out of 80. So just over 50%. I would say like 55%, something along those lines. Um, yeah. Thanks. Uh, yeah, well done. Thank you, CR7 fan. Um, so that's fine. How do I... Okay, what I would say to memorise is, um, I would say, you, you see your story that um, you've written today, write it out at least two to three times, and then another tip is to type it up as well, okay? So what I would say is to write out two to three times using some past paper questions, um, and also type it up as well, and just keep on going over it. So that's what I would say for you to memorise it, okay? So try to learn as much of it. Um, even if you don't memorise every single part of it, as long as you, like, memorise most of it, so, like, 60-70%, um, you should be go, go, good to go to, uh, to hear it. So I have marked it, so it's really good. So I think you should be ready to go, okay? Uh, I was needing this guidance. Much appreciated. Excellent. Um, that's what uh, we're here uh, to do, you know, to help you all prepare for these exams. And again, it's from the comfort of your own home. Do you recommend reading the insert first before answering the question? Okay, uh, that's a good question, Quinta. Um, to answer that, what I would say is first read the questions um, in the exam paper. Um, and then after that, um, then you would read the insert. The reason being is that you want to pick out and see what quotes you're looking out for. Don't read the insert first. Um, and then, you know, obviously look at the question because you're going to have to refer back to the insert. So read the questions in the paper for questions one, two, three, and four, and then read the insert because you'll already know uh, what you need to pick out and use. Um, okay. Okay, so do you... Okay, so... Oh, wow. Okay, how many ambitious words would you say to men? Um, I would say, well, I mean, to those of you who I teach, you would know... Um, Okay, um, I would say to learn probably 10, okay, 10 ambitious vocabulary or ambitious words. To those of you who I teach, you all have a vocab list, so um, you're ready to go with that, so that shouldn't be an issue. But Preet, um, I, would say, I would say from today um, onto Monday, at least 10, okay. Uh, Ridney, hello Ridney, so what's the classroom code? Um, right, I can't really put it here because it will give access to other students, I'm not allowed to do that. Um, can you ask the others in your class, please, Ridney? Um, I, I'm not allowed to share it here uh, because uh, it will give access to um, the others as well. Um, and it's against our policy. Um, right. Okay. Um, okay. Can we be uh, respectful, please? So for question five, I'm doing a home alone story with an intruder trying to break in. Any ideas how I can start it? Good. Okay. I would start off with in media rests. Okay. So you can start off with 
crash or bang. Start with In Media Rest, okay? Home Alone is actually one of my favorite movies, to be honest, okay? Um, who who likes Home Alone, like the film? It's a classic. It's something that um, I often watch. Um, I think they usually put it on during the um, holidays. But let me know if you all like Home Alone, the, the film, by, um, I think, what's the guy's name? Kevin? Kevin McAllister. Uh, okay, and in question one, we can assume answers, or do we need to say that it is implicit? Um on the text uh okay in and in question one can we assume answers or do we need to say what it is implicit no it literally lists four things quinta okay um so you list the four things you don't have to make it over complicated there could be certain parts that you might have to infer uh, but generally it's, it's quite straightforward it'll be explicit there could be the fourth one that you have to use your inference but generally you're just listing the four things okay with me yeah um, okay, I don't. Okay, I don't get these comments. Okay, um, yeah, it's calm. So watch it. Okay, cool. Right. So yeah, what we'll do is we'll have to sort of wrap up here for today. Uh, thank you very much. Um, I know some of you. I've taught you for the last time for your English exams. Whether I teach you on the weekdays, uh, whether I teach you online or face to face, um, I would like to wish you the best of luck for language paper one um, on um, on Monday and. Remember, just make sure you complete all the questions and do as uh, your teachers have told you and as I've told you, and trust me, you're going to do really well. Uh, okay, uh, can we come on? Yeah, in media rest as a take. Yeah, absolutely, Mian. Uh, Walid Ahmed, yeah, absolutely, for question three. Okay, great. Sir, for master, can I, can I, can I, sh should I describe the weather with language and structure? Yeah, you can use both, okay? Use it for both because that's something that will get you marks. Okay, um, okay, so okay, gonna have to move on then tomorrow at eight o'clock. Is this live right now or pre recorded? Well, I mean, you would know because it does say live at the top. Um, so, um, this isn't pre recorded, um, so that's something that you need to remember. So, we will be going live tomorrow. Um, so yeah, so I'm gonna wrap up here for today because, um, I do have a long day tomorrow teaching many revision classes in preparation for. Uh, Monday. To those of you who I teach tomorrow, do bring in your past papers, um, any model answers or anything you'd like to me, uh, like me to check uh, as tomorrow is our final um, sort of opportunity. Yeah, okay. What do you say? Uh, the text question to... Uh... <laughs> okay, right. Okay, so there's so many questions, right? Um, I appreciate it because... Um, it's quite okay let's take this final three wow okay right <laughs> there's so many questions right i'm gonna have to take this final three questions and wrap up because um i do have other things to do um so what do you suggest if i can't guess the meaning of a keyword on the text um so what i would say is move on and find something else quinta there's always something else that you can annotate and analyze for uh, for the top marks okay so don't stress don't panic if you find a word or phrase that you struggle to sort of um, analyze in further detail. Um, so I hope that answers your question, Quinta. Um, see also, so I used the word, the one word sentence, then describe, then describe the weather, then I can actually start the story. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So you can start off with the weather and then transition from the outside to the inside, um, CR7 fan. You know, for the last question, do you have to write a story related to, no, I've answered that before. The, the picture that they give you um, is separate. The picture is for the description. The story is separate. If you want to use the picture for inspiration, then that's up to you, okay? So Logic YT, I hope that answers your question. Adam Ezzedine, could I send you my question five story for you to mark? Now, I appreciate you asking, uh, but unfortunately, um, I only am marking my own students' work. And to those of you who I teach, you know, I, I'm extremely busy with uh, the classes and work. So I'm only going to be able to mark my own students. I hope you respect that um, as I am, you know, trying my best to mark um, all my students' work. Um, but that's that. Thank you. Okay, that's no problem. This work, 
Okay, this bro gets the English lit question, so I have my faith in you. Thank you very much. Yep, Logic YT. So thank you for being um, a, a subscriber since then. So yes, we did get uh, our predictions correct for English literature. So thank you very much. Right, um, I am going to end it here for today. Um, and thank you very much. Um, and I'm going to end it here for today. Thank you. Goodbye.